Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Mercado. We're here with the sports medicine program. Uh, we're just finishing up a unit on diabetes, and we have guest speaker here, um, Sophia Fischera, that uh, has a, is a former student of mine, an athlete, and she's here to share some information that I think would be really helpful and beneficial uh, to you as students, and then even to, to anybody else who might view the, view the, uh, the interview. So hi, Sophia, how are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing very good, thank you. Um, so we're just gonna get to a few questions for you, you know, ask, you know, give as much information as possible. But how, so how old were you um, when uh, you were first diagnosed with type one diabetes? I was diagnosed at seven years old in February. Okay, and um, so what type of symptoms did you have that led you to be diagnosed? So I remember feeling weird a lot. And I was, I remember mostly feeling low, which I didn't know what low was. Okay. And I remember that a lot. And I also, my symptoms were, I was, I was very dehydrated. I was drinking so much water. I was drinking so much water, this is embarrassing, to the point where I couldn't hold in my pee that I would just like pee myself. That's how much water I was drinking. Like I couldn't, like when I would sleep, I would drink so much water that I wouldn't even be able to wake myself up to go use the restroom. See. It was, and it was like constantly, my mom's like, like, what's wrong with you? You're too old for this. And so after that, my mom ended up taking me, it was probably about a month. My mom ended up taking me to the doctors because I kept telling her I was feeling weird. And she remembers to this day, like one day she remembers distinctly like, Sophia, I remember you telling me how weird you felt. And I was like, it's so weird that now you have diabetes. Wow. So you actually, she almost thought you were like a, just a bedwetter. Yep, right? basically. <laughs> Uh, and so, your, uh, that leads me to the next question. So your mom was a family member that first suspected that you might uh, have a problem that a doctor may need to be consulted? Yes. Anybody else that was involved in that at all? Um, no, not really, basically just my mom. But my mom never thought I had diabetes. Like that never came up on her mind that, oh, my daughter has diabetes. Because I also have an older cousin, he's like six years, seven years older than me, and he got diagnosed three years before I did. He did? Yeah, and that was on my dad's side, so all my diabetes runs on my dad's side. Got it. Yeah. Wow. Um, so did you know what having type 1 diabetes meant? Absolutely that not, because when I got diagnosed, I remember we went to my doctor, and they didn't test me for diabetes exactly. They had us go to the emergency room, because that's what they assumed I had. So they um, admitted me to the emergency room, and they had to pin me down to even prick my finger to find out if I had diabetes. Like, I was the person who was totally just terrified of shots. And so when they pricked my finger, they sent us home still. And they ended up calling my mom maybe like three hours later telling my mom I had diabetes. I remember walking outside and I was going to eat something. And my mom's like, Sophia, you can't eat that. You have to wait. Because she thought I had diabetes and she started crying. Because that's when she found out she just got a phone call. Yeah. So she knew more about... Yeah, she knew about diabetes because she's had um, her uncle die from diabetes, but okay. he had type two. I have type one, okay. so they're very different. So how? So uh, again, my question was, how did you feel emotion when you found out you were type one? Um, I don't remember having any emotion to it. I remember being scared because I was scared of the shots. Right. And so probably for the first year and a half, I didn't do my own shots. I had my mom do them. But they did have me practice doing them in the hospital. Okay. They gave me like an orange and they gave me a set of needles. Okay. And they had me practice doing my own shots. So how so how was that? You like, Um It was on? very weird because I'm seven years old. Like you wouldn't expect a seven year old to shoot themselves with a needle. I mean it's very different, you know, and it, you have to be very mature. Like you thinking of it like imagine your daughter doing it, you know? Sure. It took a while. Right. It took me a while. Like I couldn't do it off the bat. And even doing my first shot, it took me a while. Like, I used to like, like, just sit here, just like, look at my leg, I'm like, should I do it? Like, <laughs> I don't know if I should do this. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt. Uh, so fast forward, um, so how many shots uh, did you have to take daily when you were diagnosed? When I was diagnosed, so basically how it works is you eat. When you eat, you take a shot. You check your blood sugar, you see what your blood sugar is, and then you do your dose of insulin. So depending, my carb ratio right now is 10. So every 10 carbs, I take one unit of insulin. Okay. And so I would take two, five shots a day, depending how much I ate. I'm a snacker, so okay. I like to snack a lot, so okay. I have to do it more often. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. 
fast forward to today, how, how do you self-administer the insulin? With my, I have, oh, sorry, I have all this stuff right here. So, I have two types of insulin. I have a night insulin and I have a daytime insulin. This is my night insulin. It um, lasts through the whole day. So, you basically you take off this little thing right here and you screw it on and you just take this off. You have to pump two out to make sure the needle works because if the needle doesn't work, then you won't get your insulin. So they want to make sure you know your insulin works. And um, so I do that about five times a day. That's how I administer my insulin through my insulin. And then the um, orange one is the one I use to give when I eat food. So that one is, it works faster. The, um, the orange, sorry, the orange one works faster. The gray one works slower. It's like one that lasts out through the whole day to make sure your blood sugar stays at a, the same length, so it doesn't go up and down. And then the other orange one is for when you eat. Okay. Um, so there's a specific time of day when you give yourself insulin. It just basically has to do with it when you eat. Yeah, it's correct? when you eat. Except the night insulin. That's the one you take at night every day. So I take it around 10:30 at night every day. Okay. And you had mentioned earlier that. You used to use a pump for the insulin yes. administration? So I started my pump in about fifth grade. And a pump is something that stays on you for three days and then you change it. So it's a it's like a big circle like this. I wish I should have brought my insert, but I didn't. It was a it's like a big circle like this, and you basically stick it on yourself and then it pumps into you. And the tube goes in with the needle and a plastic tube. So a needle doesn't stay in you the whole time. The needle comes out and the plastic tube stays in. And that stays into you for three days. And so I had that from fifth grade to eighth grade. And I also have my meter back here. This meter connected to my pump. So when I would check my blood sugar, the meter would calculate what my blood sugar was. And it would automatically tell my pump how much insulin I needed. The only thing I would have to put in is how many carbs I ate. And that meter is so smart. It has different types of food, most popular foods on there. So you can just put in like, oh, I'm eating fries and it would automatically know what kind of like, um, how many carbs fries have. And so I would do that. And I got off the pump in eighth grade because I honestly found I became more lazy myself. Like I would just not check my blood sugar because I was able to give myself insulin through my pump. I could just grab my pump, put it in my insulin unit, and then that was it. I wouldn't have to check my blood sugar. So I would just, uh, I became really lazy. And also, it's not very attractive to have a big bulky box on your side. Okay. And so I had to carry a box right here, and it's connected to a string. And I would usually put it on my stomach. And I just found it very uncomfortable. You could see it through clothing. They also, my mom's trying to get me on it right now, a sensor. Okay. And that doesn't have a string. That's something that monitors your blood sugar. So the sensor stays in you also, and that um, monitors your blood sugar all day, so you know exactly what your blood sugar is. She wants me to dine in so I can just know my blood sugar at all times. But um, I'm not willing to have the big bulky thing again. Okay. I wasn't a fan of it. So how do you how do you check your blood sugar now then? Just through this meter. Through the same meter? Okay. The same meter does the same thing. It's just not connected to my pump anymore. So with the meter, I'm not sure. Some of you guys probably have grandparents that have diabetes or you guys could know somebody that has diabetes. So you just take this and after that you just take one of these strips out. And you just put it in here. And then I would get my pricker and I would prick my finger. And then once it's going to give me a go, when to go. And it tells me when to put my blood sugar in. And then it takes about five seconds to read my blood sugar. So then you prick your finger. I prick my finger. You should go to prick your finger every time you eat so you okay. know your blood sugar so you can give your correct amount of correction. Like let's say my blood sugar is um, 300. So my dosage is, I'm supposed to be between. 70 and 150. 150 is your high, 70 your low. And so when I'm over 150, it's every 50, so like let's say I'm 200, I give myself two, in, two units. Okay. If I'm 300, I go 150, 200, 250, 300, that's four units. Okay. So that's how that works, how you correct yourself. But every single person is different. Not every single person has the same correction dosage or like carbs. Some people's bodies react different to carbs than others, so they kind of have to figure out um, how your body works. Usually when I got diagnosed with diabetes, my carb count was 15 instead of 10. So every 15 units, I mean every 15 carbs, I would give myself one unit. Okay. So everything's totally different. Yeah. 
Wow. Um, so after your body receives the insulin, do you, do you feel a difference? It takes, it depends. So if my blood sugar is high, it could take mm, up to an hour to feel a difference, depending how high you are. Um, if you're normal and you give yourself insulin and you eat, you're going to feel the exact same. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel when the, like when, you're in, when your blood sugar is high? Okay. How, do you, how do you feel? When my blood sugar is high, I actually get very irritated. Oh, do you? Yeah, I have, I get very irritated fast. I feel like I get very frustrated and my body feels tight and I'm very dehydrated. So I'm pretty sure when I got diagnosed with diabetes, when I didn't know, that's how I felt most of the time. That's how I was so dehydrated. Because when I'm dehydrated, my blood sugar is high. Okay. And I can tell, like, um, my mouth is dry. I have to drink a lot of water. And I'm able to tell my body feels tight. And when my blood sugar is low, it basically feels like you haven't ate all day. And it's like when you get a taste of food when your blood sugar is low, it's like the most amazing thing. <laughs> because, like, my body, um, when I drop low, my hand literally shakes. Okay. And when I'm in the 60s, um, it only takes me about to when I'm in the 60s. So I told you the 70 ring. That's like when you drop below 70. Sure. When I'm in the 60s, I can already really tell I'm low. Like automatically on the dot. And I'll tell them, like, I have to eat or I won't be able to walk. So you really have a good understanding of your body. And yeah, exactly I can what it goes tell like. exactly how I feel. So how do, you, how do you know the difference between being irritated and being high and just being irritated in general? Um, the way it? my body feels, like okay. my body will feel tight. So it's more than just being irritated, yeah. like there's more like tightness and... Yeah, I think it's like my body just being irritated with being so high. Yeah. And it's just like, I can't stand it. Like yeah. when being high, is, I prefer being, I mean this is bad to say, I would rather be high than be low, because I'm not able to function when I'm low. Okay. When I'm high, I'm able to still function, I'm just irritated. Yeah. So low, you feel really weak. Yeah, you feel super can't, weak. Can't get up. Can't like, walk. Um, it's sometimes one time I dropped my lowest blood sugar was 21, and I was already supposed to be in a coma at that time. I was very young though. I didn't eat my lunch, and I took insulin, and I chose not to eat my lunch. I ate like a bite of it, and I dropped very low. And I'm so really surprised I didn't go into a coma because usually people who drop to 20, you're in a coma already, and then that's when you have to use a glucagon and you have to call the hospital. Yeah. And yeah, that was probably pretty much the lowest I've ever dropped. I haven't dropped below 50 in a while. Okay. So. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. It's not fun being low. So is there any point in time before you receive the insulin where you don't feel well or feel yourself? Um, my night insulin, if I skipped it, I'll be able to tell throughout the day. Okay. My blood sugar will be high. I've done it before on accident. Like, you know, like you just forget to take medication. You know, some people right. forget. I've forgotten before, but um, I can always just do it when I wake up. Okay. But you can tell throughout the day that you don't feel yourself. Got it. Mm -hmm. And um, do you do you like naturally skip meals, or you just absolutely can't? Um, I could skip meals. Um, yeah, I've skipped meals multiple times. Like I don't eat breakfast. You don't have to have um, a normal like you don't have to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner if you have okay. diabetes. You can snack. Like my diabetes, I have type one. So type 1 is way different from type 2. Type 2 is when you're very unhealthy. Uh, type 2 is when you eat unhealthy, you don't work out. Type 1 is just genetic. Like you just get it from it running in your blood. So I can, basically I'm healthy, I'm a healthy person. Type 2, you're not healthy. Yeah. I'm just not able to produce insulin because that's how my body works. Sure. And there's nothing I can change about it. But type 2, you're able to change it. You change your eating habits, you'll be able to not have diabetes anymore. Sure. But type one, you'll have it for the rest of your life. Um, I went to a convention maybe three months, four months ago, and they did find a cure for early on diabetes. Okay. So that's a good thing for people who are early on. So basically, your insulin has cells. So when you're first diagnosed, you still have insulin cells in your body. And some people are able to, the doctors are able to produce those cells more than to create your insulin to start working. So I've heard that maybe like 80% of people it works on. If for me it won't work on, I'll no longer create insulin. Okay. So it's only on, um, for early on diabetes. And you mentioned early on, what does early on? Early on is within a year. Within of type a year. one diagnosis. Type one diabetes, yes. So you'll be able to still produce insulin. When I was diagnosed, I was still able to produce insulin. That's why I never went into a coma. My insulin was still being produced just a little bit but they didn't have the cure 10 years ago because it's been almost 11 years since I've had diabetes. So I've had it for a very long time. So right. they won't be able to create those cells in me anymore. Right. So 
you and I go back a few years, you know, mm -hmm. as a sports medicine student at Pasadena High, as a soccer player. Um, and speaking of not feeling well, I remember a time, a game where you weren't feeling well had to come out of the game. Yeah. Right? And, um, you know, uh, and you said you felt low. Yeah. Right? I know you kind of mentioned before, but can you explain to the audience what low feels, lo low means? So, low is like, when you're playing a sport and you're low, you won't be able to play. Like, you have to sit out for, it's going to take you a while. My, what I usually eat is, I won't take juice. Juice is the easiest thing. They have sugar pills for diabetics. And the sugar pills, you take like two sugar pills, and it'll bring your sugar up, but it takes too long. To me, juice reacts fast. But then again, you drink too much juice, your blood sugar goes too high. So it's like you kind of just have to wait it out. And waiting it out, like you still feel low for a while. So you have to kind of sip on juice. You can't just chug it all either way you, that's how you feel you want to do but like feeling low is like the worst thing like you're literally your body is literally just shaking and you're not able to walk very well so there's only a certain amount of juice you should drink then? yes it should be about only one carb worth okay because that's going to bring your blood sugar up right away i was going to ask when you feel low what feel what foods do you feel do you like best to yeah, help you it's gonna feel be yourself juice. it's going to be juice for me personally people actually like sugar tablets i don't like the way they taste they're like little circles like this, just of sugar. And it's like eating um, like smart, but way more sugary, and they're huge. Okay. And I just don't like chewing on those. They weren't very tasty to me. Is there a specific food that you can't uh, have too much of? Um, no, I'm actually, I don't drink any drinks with sugar in them because it does shoot up my blood sugar so high. So like when I get Starbucks, I usually don't feel good after. Or Arizona's, oh, those are the worst. <laughs> I hate Arizona's. Or Coke. I don't drink Coke. I only drink Diet Coke. Yeah. Um, but when I do drink those drinks, when I choose to, when I'm like, like I'll go out with friends, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get it this time. And I'll get one, I'm like, I feel so sick. It'll make my stomach hurt. Okay. I'm not used to drinking that much sugar. Okay. And so when I get like Starbucks, like I'm not, I don't just drink it all at once. I'm sipping on it. So when you sip on it, you're constantly just putting sugar into your body and your insulin, you put it in and it reacts fast, okay. but it's not as, um, fast reacting as the sugar going into your body. So my blood sugar feels like it's shooting up and it's just consistently shooting up because I'm consistently just sipping on the drink. I'm not drinking it all at once. Right. So that's like the worst part about when you drink sugary drinks. That's how I feel usually. So it will rise. So what happens? You have to put in, in, in administer insulin like right after that? Or um, how does that? Usually they say to do your insulin 15 minutes before you eat. Before you eat? before you eat because insulin doesn't react very fast okay. like it's very slow acting like they say it could take a 10 to like an hour okay. and if your um, blood sugar is high you should do it even longer before you eat because then if you eat your blood sugar is going to shoot right up again right and if it's already high it's going to go even higher and your insulin is going to take longer to react so how does that work being an athlete and being in your game right where you're feeling low mm -hmm. Do you administer insulin? So I would usually check my blood sugar before. Okay. And so if I am low, I probably will sit out the first half. I won't play. Okay. And then I would drink juice, because it would be like the fastest thing I can do. And then I would probably hop back into the game right. the following quarter. Or if I'm dropping low during the game, I'll just be like, like I have to come out. Yeah. No, I remember that yeah. time where you- I was like, I have to come out. You came out, you I have to come out, pulled you out. Um, you did your stuff, mm -hmm. and then I think we put you back in, and you're like came back out. I think that time yeah, you said, no, I got it. Yeah, it's really I can't hard. do it. It's hard. Yeah. So we tried, and then like, okay, we'll, you know, sit yeah. you out the rest of the game. Because like now I go to the gym. I don't play soccer now, right. but I do go to the gym. And every time I go to the gym, I'm like, I feel low, and oh. I'm like, I have to eat before the gym. So now every day I have to eat before the gym because. Since I stopped working out, stopped working out for like a whole year, maybe a year and a half. Okay. Um, like my body wasn't used to doing all that exercising, so now like my body feels super weak when I do go. So I do have to eat now before I go to the gym. Yeah. Because I, my blood sugar does drop low. Has there um, ever been a time where you you um, had a diabetic emergency and you or someone with you had to call? 911 or or had to transport you so this happened in sixth grade I was going to soccer practice and I told my mom like I do not feel good and this was when I was on the pump and the pump insert was bent so it didn't go in me and I thought it was in me I probably wasn't getting insulin for about 10 hours and so I basically 
passed out on the field. I didn't pass out. I was still all there. But it was like I had to be rushed to emergency room. I didn't go. Um, I didn't call 911. My mom didn't find the need to. And once I got there, they had to admit me right away. I didn't have to do the waiting time because I, I literally couldn't function. And my blood sugar was so high, I was throwing up everywhere. And my blood sugar was over 800. And I'm supposed to be 150, below 150. Wow. So I ended up having to stay in the hospital for three days that time. And my immune system's very weak, so I'm in the hospital a lot. I go to the hospital, I've been in the hospitalized maybe four times, and most of the time it's because I get weird illnesses. I've gotten typhus. I was in the hospital for typhus, which is you get bit by a flea, and you have a fever, you have a headache, you have, it was horrible. I got typhus. And I got scarlet fever. I've gotten, I got some weird sickness last month. I was in the hospital for four to five days and they messed up on my spinal tap. I had to get a spinal tap done because they thought I had meningitis. And so I had to get a spinal tap done and the doctor messed up on it. And so then I had to do another procedure because my spinal fluid was leaking and it made me feel even more sick. I wasn't even able to open my eyes from how bad my migraine was. Because leaking spinal fluid, the spinal fluid wraps around your brain. And when you leak it, it like causes tension in your brain. And so I had to get an MRI done. They had it then they when they did the procedure, they had to readmit me to the hospital. And they had to do a blood clot in my back. So they took blood from here and they put it where my spinal fluid was to clog up the spots where it was leaking. And so I wasn't even I was sick like even worse than I was when I came in. And they couldn't even find out what was wrong with me. They just made it worse. Wow. So I've been in the hospital a lot, but mostly because my immune system's weak. The only one time was when I was in sixth grade when my pump insert got bent and I couldn't. Yeah, can you explain that? What, what happened? That pump insert was so bent and... when you insert it, I thought I felt it. I obviously didn't. But you, you pull the trigger back and you push it and it goes into you. So I don't, there must have been a, like, something's wrong with the insert that went in, like, automatically and we just didn't know. Because this one you can't test if it works or not. Okay. And so when it went in, the, basically, I don't know how it even bent because the needle would have to go in me. Okay. But it could have slit, um, the needle could have slit through the plastic tube that went in me and it bent that way. We don't really know how it bent. Okay. But when we peeled it off, the whole tube was just like bent like this and it's supposed to be in you. So you were not even getting insulin? I was insulin. getting insulin for over 10 hours and I'm supposed to be getting it. And I was giving my, I was eating, you know, like a normal person, giving myself insulin, but I was never getting it. So yeah. my blood sugar was just, Super, super high, and I told her, I'm like, I have a stomach ache, I don't feel good, I shouldn't be fine. She didn't believe me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happened. And yes, you're irritated too? I was, I don't At know. That time? I think my older age, I started <laughs> getting more irritated. <laughs> now, when I'm high, because it's just very frustrating. I bet. Yeah. Um, can you explain to our audience what an individual or first responder? Would need to look for to need to call 911 and somebody um, that they don't know. If you guys don't know, some people do carry have wristbands. I personally don't. I used to have one it, where it says you have diabetes. Okay. There's that's something you can look for. Usually, be on their neck or on their wrist. A lot of people do wear them. Okay. Um, look at their fingers. Their fingers will have pricks on the tips of their fingers. Their fingers will be beat up at the top. When you do check your blood sugar, your fingers get beat up. Do they? Yeah. You can also, if they're able to respond, you can ask them. Right. Because usually you're able to respond. You're usually there. And, or go through their bag. I mean, that's kind of personal. Yeah. You can see, like, this will always be in my bag, and this will always be in my bag. Okay. For, like, every single time I go out. Got it. So, those would be, like, the two things to probably look for. Um, like I said, you should probably ask them. And if they say, like, my blood sugar's low, you should probably call 911. Or my blood sugar is too high, you should call 911. Yeah. Because it's the safest thing to do because you can go into a coma. Your blood I'm lucky I didn't go into a coma when I was in like the 800s. I right. was supposed to. I never went into a coma. Especially when I dropped low, I never went into a coma. But right. there's a big possibility you could. People do pass out. But like I said, my diabetes isn't as harmful mm -hmm. to my body as it is to people who are type 2, who are already unhealthy people. I'm not unhealthy. It's just I just don't want to do something. Right. No, it's great information, even for me as a, as a, you know, chiropractic physician, uh, and that sports medicine teacher to hear about looking at, you know, the fingers, yeah, uh, fingers in terms of pinpricks, and even looking at 
potential. And like spots, you get shots also. Like I have a bruise right now on my stomach because okay. like sometimes you hit yourself in the vein and okay. you'll bleed and then that causes a bruise. Right. And I'll have bruises on my stomach. I have, um, I do my night insulin right here because it's a lot of insulin and it hurts sometimes. Right. So I'll just do it on my thighs and I have um, dots on my thighs, all over my so thighs. So that might be another, on my stomach. You can see place. where you can see the needles. You can definitely see the holes. I mean, they're not big, but they're right. noticeable. Right. Um, so there are times when we all have different seasons of fitness mm -hmm. uh, where we work out more than at other times uh, to get our bodies more fit. Is there a particular season of fitness when you feel better or worse? Um, not that I haven't worked out in a while, no. I wouldn't say that because I was, you know, I was playing club soccer for since sixth grade to my junior year. So I was, club soccer is year round, so I'm always working out. Um, I never found a time where it was harder or at least hard, you know, working out. I've always found it the same. The only time, like, when I was on the pump, I couldn't play with my pump on. The pump comes off. Okay. You can clip it, you can unclip huh. it, and you could take it off. But, like, let's say my blood sugar was high, my mom would, like, freak out because I'm not getting my insulin because that pump does give you my night insulin, too. It would give me my dosage okay. of, um, throughout the whole day, like a little bit of insulin, and I wouldn't be getting that during soccer. So my blood sugar would tend to be high when I was on the pump when after soccer games because I wasn't getting my night insulin throughout the day. Okay. Um, so can you explain your day-to-day -day routine uh, and how for us and how you balance having type one diabetes in your in your daily life? So I eat like a normal person. I eat like all you guys. Um, I don't have a specific diet. I do, I'll eat lunch, usually I don't eat breakfast, but I'll eat lunch, I'll check my blood sugar, then I'll do my insulin, and then I'll eat. Sometimes I'll do it the opposite, I'll eat, and then I'll do my own insulin, depending on how hungry I am. Um, but yeah, I'll do that, I do my night insulin at night, always. You can never do it in the morning, because okay. it's like, throughout the whole day, you'll throw off your routine. So usually if I miss my night insulin, I won't take it during the day. Okay. I mean, you could, but I won't, because I don't have to take it at night again. Or I won't take the amount I take. So I actually take 36 units of night insulin. So I'll do half in this leg and half in this leg because it's way too much insulin to put in one. Okay. Like, it hurts. So it hurts. The night insulin hurts more than the daytime. I don't know why, but it does. And the night insulin is there to be able to keep your blood sugar balanced while you sleep. Yes. Correct? And throughout the whole day. And throughout like, the whole day. Yeah. Because you only take your Novolog, which is the orange one. Um, when you eat, okay. and so that's the only insulin you'll be getting. Like you guys are constantly getting insulin all throughout the whole day, sure. but I'm not, so that's why I have to take that one, sure. because it prolongs throughout the whole day. Wow. So, um, how are you feeling today? I feel good. Yeah? I'm feeling really good, yeah. I don't feel high, I don't feel low, so that's good. Yeah, I, I feel bet. like a normal person. I bet. Most of the time I feel normal, depending on what I eat. Because so, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes like, you eat a sugary item, it does shoot up your insulin, you will feel weird, okay. like chips, because you know you're snacking on chips, like I said. It's like the same thing as drink when you're snacking on them. Your blood sugar is going to keep going like this, and the insulin goes very slow. It doesn't react fast. So I suggest, like, if you do eat chips, take it before, like 30 minutes before you eat the chips. What if you're a type 1 diabetic? If you're type 1, because type 2, I believe you take pills. Okay. Mm -hmm. And type 1, you take insulin. No matter what, every type 1 diabetic is taking insulin. Shot. Yeah. Type 2, you take pills. Unless you're really bad, you do have to take insulin. Thank you very much, Sophia, yeah, for, for joining us and being here today. Um, can we give her a round of applause?